Good night. Tonight, danger zone. Hundreds of thousands of people ordered to leave their homes as deadly floodwaters rise in the east. And the worst may be yet to come. On the brink, an Israeli military operation to save a kidnapped soldier threatens to spark a larger conflict. The children of Katrina, the summer camps healing the hurricane's youngest victims after they lost almost everything. That's our closer look. And Superman's secret. He still stands for truth and justice, but why has he stopped fighting for the American way? From ABC News, this is World News Tonight with Charles Gibson. Good evening. A major portion of the East Coast is underwater tonight after the heaviest rains and the worst flooding in more than 25 years. The storm that put the Potomac River near flood stage, inundating government buildings and paralyzing Washington, moved north so that right now the Delaware River that separates New Jersey and Pennsylvania is cresting at points 14 feet above flood stage. The Schuylkill River is headed for its highest levels in more than 30 years. The Susquehanna River is expected to pressure 41-foot-high levees. And the Mohawk River is flooding Utica, New York. But that's just part of the picture. Up to 200,000 people are being evacuated near Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. It is a mess. And so we start our coverage with ABC's David Muir along the banks of the Schuylkill tonight. Good evening, Charlie. This is precisely why they've called for those mandatory evacuations tonight. So many major rivers overflowing their banks. This neighborhood behind me in Redding, Pennsylvania, has already been evacuated because we're along the Schuylkill River this evening. Take a look at this live picture from above the river tonight from a bridge. You can see that water is still running and bringing with it the highest number of evacuations because of flooding in this region in more than three decades. Tonight in northern Pennsylvania, all eyes are on the Susquehanna River. It is still rising and not expected to crest until at least midnight. In Scranton, rescuers did their work from rafts, picking up families stranded on stairways. Oh my God, it, I mean, it got really flooded. I mean, this is the worst it's ever been since I've lived here. To the north in upstate New York, part of Interstate 88 gave way near Binghamton. Two tractor trailers fell into the river below. The trucks were swept away. One driver's body was found the other is presumed dead. And because of flooding, more than 100 patients are being evacuated from a Binghamton hospital. They've been pumping out 24,000 gallons of water a minute, and it's still not enough. This is rivaling one of the biggest flood events that occurred, and that is uh, Agnes back in 1972. Pennsylvania's governor has now declared disaster emergencies in 46 of the state's 67 counties. In Reading, Pennsylvania, Thomas Maza and his neighbors were evacuated from their row houses. Well, I'll tell you, about an hour ago, I seen a dumpster floating down 2nd Street. These are the basements here where you all live. Their homes now sit in several feet of water. So this morning, the water hadn't even reached these homes? Oh, absolutely not. Officer Phil Santoro is evacuating families. They don't realize the danger that's involved with the hydraulics that moving water creates, and it's impossible for you to get out of it. Long after the rain, the smaller streams and creeks are still feeding several major rivers. In Richmondville, New York, it's not the rivers, but the mudslides. Rescuers used ropes to pull families and at least one baby to safety. Tilly Riso was rescued from her home. I just prayed all night that it would stop raining so hard and that the creek would be safe. And when I woke up this morning, it was the other way around. And tonight here in Reading, authorities tell us they hope this is the worst of it. In fact, they say the Schuylkill is cresting as we speak. But so many other major rivers will crest over the next 24 hours. And as you heard that woman just say, there will be many more prayers overnight tonight, hoping that homeowners will return to their homes not only still intact, but at least somewhat dry, Charlie. David Muir reporting from Reading, Pennsylvania. And as David mentioned, talking about the overall flooding picture, that there are so many communities that are having flooding right now, indeed flooding throughout the East. But in each of those communities, there are local emergencies that are all stories in themselves. For example, in Montgomery County, Maryland, near Washington, D.C., there's an earthen dam on Lake Needwood. That dam is in real jeopardy. And ABC's David Curley is nearby. The race is on to save this 40-year-old earthen dam, less than a football field wide. The small dam is leaking, and it's holding back a lot of water. So you could have water coming through 
or around the dam. Early this morning, county officials took action. Then we need you to grab your belongings and um, be back there right away. Most of the 2,200 residents who live downstream from the dam got out quickly. Those who had nowhere to go were taken to a nearby high school. And they said we're worried that the dam is going to break. As soon as the police knocked on the door, they told us it was a mandatory evacuation, and, you know, we were scared, like, another Katrina could happen to us. About 200 people are staying at the high school. Maryland's governor told them the danger has not passed. But at this time, we cannot give guarantees to any residents concerning the time or the day in which they'll be able to re return home. The water behind the dam has risen 25 feet higher than normal. It's seeping out of several areas. The water levels, as you can see, are certainly much higher and much more uh, raging than, than they normally would be. All day, crews use sandbags and rock to try and stop the leaks and shore up the weakened dam. There are hundreds of millions of gallons of extra water in this lake. Just to give you an example, this is the boat ramp, which quickly drops off and the water is all the way up. And that eight foot sign, about half of it covered with water. The evacuated area includes 500 apartments and 700 homes. One report says 100 people refused to leave, apparently hoping that crews can keep this dam from breaking. David Curley, ABC News, Rockville, Maryland. Throughout the areas affected by these high rains, the skies have now cleared, but the floodwaters are still rising. There was a significant Supreme Court decision today. The court largely upheld the Texas congressional redistricting that helped Republicans gain six House seats in 2004. That was important enough, but the court also said that states can redraw district lines whenever they want. And that has huge implications for politics in this country. So we turn to ABC's chief Washington correspondent, George Stephanopoulos. George, we're used to the fact that states redistrict every 10 years after a census. And I gather the court is saying in this decision that actually states can redistrict whenever they want. That's exactly right, Charlie. The court finds that the Constitution says there should be a census every 10 years for the purpose of re redrawing those districts. But the Constitution does not prohibit states from revisiting it between censuses, so they're free to do whatever they want. Redistricting is sort of an arcane concept to many people, but why should they care? Why is this so important politically? Well, it is complicated, Charlie, but let me try to break it down. You got to go back to Texas in 2003. The State House goes from Democrat to Republican, and the former House Majority Leader, Tom DeLay, sees an opportunity there. He says, let's redraw the map, increase Republican House members. He, he succeeded. Six Republican House seats were added, and now the Supreme Court is saying that's okay. So the, the debate going on now is, will a lot of other states follow that pattern? Will there be constant kind of perpetual power grabs every time a state legislature changes control? All right, so will there be power grabs every time a state legislature changes control? <laughs> Hard to know, and it is a matter of a real debate here right now. The chairman of the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee, Rahm Emanuel, says yes. He says you could have new fights every two years. But a lot of other experts say it's hard to have all the political planets align. The state house, the governor's office, the state legislature all going in the same direction and willing to take on that big battle, which could provoke political backlashes. All right, George Stephanopoulos reporting from Washington. Overseas next to the Middle East. We reported last night that Israel had started its military move into Gaza. Well, today the campaign against Palestinian militants intensified with Israel bombing Hamas targets and knocking out power and water to most of the Gaza Strip, an attempt to win the release of a captured Israeli soldier. But there are concerns this Israeli campaign could ignite a larger conflict. ABC's David Wright is inside Gaza. Israel's government today promised extreme measures in its effort to rescue the kidnapped soldier, and the Israeli military is making good on that threat. Potentially more troubling, the conflict is widening. Today, Israeli warplanes went all the way to Syria to buzz the Syrian president's summer home, and the Syrians shot back at them. Bashar Assad actively supports the militant group holding Israel's soldier. These images, released by the Israeli military, show last night's attack on three key bridges, as well as Gaza's only power station. No one was killed, but on the ground, many feel the impact. Hundreds of thousands of Palestinians are now without electricity. Restoring it will likely take months. Today, we visited some of the ruined bridges. Israel says it destroyed them to prevent the hostage takers from transferring the kidnapped soldier. They insist their actions so far have been measured. 
In the most densely populated areas, Palestinians are battening down. These barricades mark the entrance to the largest Palestinian refugee camp in Gaza, home to more than 100,000 people. And inside, every street and alleyway has been fortified into a possible defensive position. Are you not this 20-year-old Palestinian militant told me he was ready to die. I am not uh, afraid. So far, the loudest voice of restraint belongs to the father of the soldier at the center of all this. We hope there'll be no further casualties, Noam Shalit said, Israelis or Palestinians. That may be wishful thinking. David Wright, ABC News, Gaza. There are reports today from Iraq that 11 Sunni insurgent groups have offered an immediate halt to all attacks, including those on American troops, if the U.S. agrees to withdraw its forces in two years. Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld was asked about the offer. He said President Bush believes a timetable is not something that is useful. Meanwhile, one of the soldiers who died recently in Iraq is someone you might recognize. Marine Sergeant Raymond Plower was featured in the controversial documentary Fahrenheit 9-11, depicted as a relentless recruiter. What do you got going on later this afternoon? How about tomorrow? We say right around 10 o'clock Monday morning. Yeah, that, that sounds pretty good. Okay. You want me to come pick you up? Sergeant Plower was killed in Al Anbar province Monday, a roadside bomb. He always maintained, and the Marines always said, he was unfairly portrayed in the movie. Plower was in his second deployment. This is a picture of him handing out candy at an Iraqi school last month. His wife said he carried the same Bible his grandfather carried in World War II. He gave a kidney to his uncle five years ago. His wife told us today that was the kind of Marine he was, not the man in the movie. And Sergeant Plower was due to come home in just two months. Still ahead, a special summer for the children of Katrina caring Americans making a difference. It's our Closer Look. Bill Gates meets some very brainy students, the ones who want to be the next Bill Gates. And Superman, no longer fighting for the American way. His enemies could not change him. Political correctness has. This is World News Tonight, brought to you by the makers of Pepsi Complete. I was just getting to the good part when Uncle Ernie dropped his tongs. I'd seen that look before. It was heartburn. Before you could say duck sauce, I was there with my Pepsi Complete. I told him only Pepsi Complete starts to neutralize acid on contact and keeps heartburn from coming back all day or all night. In no time, Uncle Ernie was in Mooshu heaven, and I had my eye on a spicy dumpling. Pepsi Complete, just one and heartburn's done. Some things men don't want to talk about. Like prostate problems. But I learned one in three men will have them. So I switched to one of day men's. A complete multivitamin plus lycopene, which Harvard studies suggest may help prostate health. Some things are healthy to talk about. One a day men's. Try something new when you create your own summer seafood feast at Red Lobster. Combine new creamy garlic jumbo shrimp or new pan-seared sea scallops with favorites like decadent scampi or hand-breaded shrimp. Only for a limited time at Red Lobster. I feel these tingling sensations deep inside my legs. It's a tightening feeling that keeps me from getting to sleep. For me, it's creepy crawling. I feel like I have to get up and move just to get some relief. My doctor said it's restless leg syndrome, or RLS. He prescribed Requip, the only RLS medication approved by the FDA. He said Requip would help relieve my RLS symptoms, even the uncontrollable leg movements that disturb my sleep. Requip helped me make peace with my legs. Requip may cause you to fall asleep or feel very sleepy during normal activities such as driving, or to faint or feel dizzy when you stand up. Tell your doctor if you experience these problems or if you drink alcohol or are taking medicines that make you drowsy. Side effects include nausea, drowsiness, vomiting, and dizziness. Most patients were not bothered enough to stop taking Requip. Ask your doctor if Requip can help put your RLS to rest. Hey, you feel like going out? I'm bloated, irregular. Probably stressed from exams. Well, look how it makes us eat. So how come you're okay? I eat Activia every day. 
Introducing smooth, delicious Dan and Activia. With the natural culture Bifidus regularis, it's clinically proven to help naturally regulate your digestive system in two weeks. It's good. I feel great. Help naturally regulate your digestive system in two weeks. Now let's get out of here. We're going to take a closer look at some upbeat news for a change for some of the children of Katrina, 10 months after the disaster. When the hurricane hit, many of those children lost family, lost everything they owned, lost any sense they might have of childhood innocence. Now, thanks to charities and churches, at least 37 camps are up and running on the Gulf Coast, giving more than 13,000 Katrina victims a reintroduction to the simple joys of summer fun. ABC's Steve Osinsami is in New Orleans. For the many families still recovering from Katrina, the summer camps here are a godsend. Look at the back of it. They're specifically designed for children who lived through the hurricane and witnessed the chaos afterwards. No Early curfew. No gas. Long lines. No In Picayune, Mississippi, Camp Hip Hop is free, and no child is turned away. The counselors say that since Katrina, many of the children have developed a fear of water. Their therapy is a daily swim. We're able to put the kids in the water with trained lifeguards and help them work through that fear. It's just overwhelming. You don't think of all these things until you see it firsthand. Some of the kids still get nervous when it rains. Let's take out this one first. The youngest are given backpacks with crayons, a coloring book, and emergency supplies to help ease their minds. Across this region, there are many children still living in crowded FEMA trailers, and it's taken a toll. In my house, I was a lot comfortable. Now that I'm in a trailer, it's smaller, and you don't have any room to play with in. Christina Foss says the camp has helped her three children calm down. They fight a little less on camp days than they do on weekends. Weekends are killers. At the Viet summer camp in New Orleans, the children are learning needlepoint, dance, and piano. Since Katrina, they've been forced to grow up quickly. I miss a lot on things. I get rushed through things. Getting rushed through things. Camp counselors who meet regularly with each child say it's heartbreaking to hear the hardships the kids have had to endure. They say it's heartwarming to see them finally having fun. Steve Osinzami, ABC News, New Orleans. And coming up, the next big thing. Young people out to change the world, share their ideas with Bill Gates. This is a very uncomfortable situation. Sales of flatulent. I've remained silent but deadly about this problem so far. Got gas on your mind? New GasX Thin Strips dissolve quickly and relieve gas fast. GasX, pressure's off. Ready to go camping? Yes! We're here. Don't let high gas prices limit your summer fun. Stop driving all over town. Make one stop at Walmart and save with rolled back prices on over 500 of your favorite brands. of the original ranch, things seem a little more like the way they're supposed to be. Hidden Valley Ranch, the way ranch is supposed to taste. And new Italian ranch, ranch with an Italian accent. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Wouldn't it be great if your insides could be this happy? They can, with new old brand yogurt bites. Tasty golden bread flakes plus yogurt coated oat clusters. And just one serving provides 40% of your daily fiber needs. Yeah! So don't make us unhappy. We know where you live. If you're New old brand yogurt bites. Get happy inside. My baby left for college. And for the mess he left, I needed a pain reliever for my back. Took some classes of my own and got something else for arthritis pain. Went high tech and needed a headache medicine too. Every new pain, a different pain reliever. 
But now Advil is my every pain reliever. Advil works wherever I hurt, and nothing's proven stronger on tough pain. So whatever happens, happens. I'm all Advil. When you're constipated, a stimulant laxative like Dulcolax can cause cramps. And cramps can give you a bad day. Phillips caplets don't have harsh stimulants, so you get gentle relief without cramps. Relief feels better with Phillips caplets. Today, the Bush administration announced the biggest changes to federal welfare rules in 10 years. Those changes designed to establish one national standard and cut the welfare rolls. States are going to have to meet stricter definitions of what qualifies as job training or work and keep closer track of welfare recipients. The world's richest businessman, Microsoft founder Bill Gates, is in the news again today. He met with students who want to become the next Bill Gates, very bright kids who were competing to win a technology contest sponsored by Microsoft. Gates told our reporter he's very concerned about American students falling behind their counterparts in the rest of the world. Here's ABC's Neil Karlinski. They are some of the best and brightest from around the world, and to say that meeting Bill Gates is the biggest moment of their lives... Well, I cannot imagine how big it is. <laughs> it's a really big deal. Yeah. ...is almost an understatement. A big, a very big, very big deal. deal. They are seven elite computer science teams competing to solve health problems. This was Gates at their age. It takes new ideas, not, not just look at what's there and, and do it again. Today's new idea from Brazil comes in the form of vibrating wristbands, linked to a computer to help the blind navigate city streets. Through these wristbands, they will vibrate in order to give them simple commands. From Japan, virtual reality to help doctors communicate with patients far away. Hi. An American team has never won the four-year-old competition, a fact not lost on Gates, who tells ABC News he's worried. It's certainly scary that if we look at uh, the high school students, our scores compared to others are not very good. The U.S. just needs to reinvest in what's made it uh, so special. That's one of the primary goals of his foundation, ensuring a future generation of highly educated Americans, a goal bolstered this week by that $30 billion gift from Warren Buffett, which will help boost education and more. If we bring smart people together, use the latest science, give them the right resources, that given time, and we're talking about decades here, that curing those diseases and changing education, that can happen, yes. I think that everybody here really hopes that they can make a significant impact, if not with this product that they're working on now, maybe in something that they work on in the future. A future that seems just a little bit closer today. Neil Karlinski, ABC News, Redmond, Washington. And up next, Superman returns to a theater near you. But the American way does not. Dr. Robert Jarvik, inventor of the artificial heart. The average heart beats two billion times. The heart is amazing, but high cholesterol can lead to heart disease. Lipitor can help. When diet and exercise aren't enough, adding Lipitor significantly lowers bad cholesterol. 39 to 60 percent. If you have several common risk factors for heart disease, Lipitor is clinically proven to reduce your risk of heart attack. And more cardiologists surveyed said they'd prescribe Lipitor for their own families than any other cholesterol-lowering brand. Lipitor is not for everyone, including people with liver problems and women who are nursing, pregnant, or may become pregnant. You need simple blood tests to check for liver problems. Tell your doctor if you are taking other medications or if you have any muscle pain or weakness. They may be a sign of a rare but serious side effect. Lipitor is one of many treatment options to consider with your doctor. It's your heart. Ask if Lipitor is right for you. Visit Lipitor.com for a free trial. Good thing there's the speed of Maalox and a chewable, because nothing's faster. Maalox, kick acid. Writing for local office takes all day. So my denture adhesive is Polygrip. It lets me eat and greet 16 hours. The unique ooze control tip gives you less ooze, and you get 16-hour hold. Polygrip gets my vote. Try it. The human body was designed to move. That's why Serenity developed a revolutionary fabric for their protective underwear. 
that stretches in every direction to gently hug your body for a closer fit than the leading protective underwear. Serenity Discreet Activewear. You move, they move. You're protected. For a free sample, call 1-877-GET-TENA. Serenity from Tenna. My allergies can get so bad, I feel like I'm in a fog. But I'm the kind of person who wants to be focused. Now, I'm Claritin Clear. My doctor was the first one to recommend Claritin. It's the only one actually proven to make you as alert and focused as someone without allergies. Claritin relieves my sneezing and itchy eyes without making me drowsy. That one, please. 24-hour non-drowsy Claritin. Live Claritin Clear. Americans today are red, blue. I can't relate to apparently half the country. And angry. I mean, these are American values. Friday night, George Stephanopoulos with a warning for all about the state of our union on a special 2020. Tomorrow, it's GMA Special Series, Vacation Land USA, live with the top 10 best trips of the splash. Water worlds across America, from secret shipwrecks to underwater hotels. Ride the wild rapids with GMA live as Vacation Land USA rolls on tomorrow. Finally tonight, a significant change for Superman. He is still the Man of Steel. He still leaps tall buildings in a single bound. He still vanquishes bad guys and helps good guys. He still fights for truth and justice. But something has happened to fighting for the American way. Here's ABC's Jessica Yellen. For more than 50 years, the Man of Steel has flown to the defense of basic values. Truth, justice, and the American way. I'm here to fight for truth and justice in the American way. But after nearly <laughs> two decades away from the big screen... Does he still stand for truth, justice, all that stuff? The new motto comes and goes about as fast as a speeding bullet. It's only mentioned once, so if you blink, you could miss the fact that the world's greatest superhero no longer stands for the American way. So what's behind the change? To make the kind of blockbuster profits Hollywood demands, movies must sell well in foreign markets. That poses a challenge for filmmakers who have to find a way to appeal to both U.S. audiences and foreign viewers who may not be so fond of America. You don't particularly want to define Superman as something which is specifically an American product. You quite like the idea, I think, of him being a hero for the entire world. To movie executives, that means no more waving the flag. Good afternoon, Mr. President. Sorry I've been away so long. I won't let you down again. It's a measure of the times we live in that foreign audiences are ambivalent about America and American culture. It's as if uh, foreign audiences are saying, we hate you, but please send us more Baywatch. Action! Those steeped in Superman lore insist the man from Krypton has always been a citizen of the world. He was sent from Krypton to save mankind, all of us, not, not just this one particular country. He happened to crash land somewhere in the American plains. No doubt studio executives are happy to agree as long as box office receipts are up, up, and away. Jessica Yellen, ABC News, Washington. Truth, justice, and all that stuff just doesn't have the same ring. In closing tonight, a personal mention. This morning I signed off at Good Morning America after 19 years there. In recent weeks, I've been starting the day there with Diane and Robin and ending it here. Now it's going to be here, full time. Good Morning America was a wonderful experience, and I know this will be as well. That is World News Tonight for this Wednesday. I'm Charles Gibson for all of us at ABC News. Have a good evening and good night.